can't wait for this chapter to get animated, man. Like, I really can't wait for this, the last few chapters that have been extremely emotional to be animated. But this one in particular, with the incredible Yamato scene to start off this week's chapter and the Yamato scene that happens later on, the Toko and Yasue scene, you already know with the soundtracks with the direction, that is going to hit different in the anime. And then when Momonosuke pulls up on the flower capital, you already know we're going to get the premium, I'm talking platinum hits of the Wano soundtrack playing when Momonosuke pulls up in Dragon State and they're like, Kaido? And it's like, nah, son, that ain't Kaido. That ain't Kaido, that's our dragon. That is our dragon, Kozuki Momonosuke, all right? And so I can't wait for this week's chapter to be animated. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the chapter 1050 Afterthoughts. If you did not watch the reaction stream, in particular, the post uh, discussion after the reaction, we talked about all kinds of possibilities. My comment section, the chat, on Thursday night was on fire. They were cooking a full course meal in my comment section. Theories, discussions, possibilities, everything. It was an awesome discussion coming off of this chapter that because I got spoiled, just it made up for it, man. It was it was an awesome discussion. And if you have not gotten the opportunity to listen to it and you would like to hear a, a more afterthoughts on on, on our the Kaido stuff, what could happen in post Wano, all that stuff. Uh, please uh, go listen to that if that's what you would like to hear. What I want to talk about in this particular video are two individuals and what's about to go down with these two individuals, right? With Yamato and Momonosuke because I cannot wait to see what's in store with these two. But before we get into that, if, hypothetically speaking, this is all over, right? Because, like I said, it, when Chapter 1049 ended, I'm cool with either route. And I feel that way still, even more so with 1050. I'm cool with either this is the real ending and we're getting right into post no greatness, or we're being faked out and craziness is inbound. Regardless, I'm cool. I'm cool with either scenario, right? But if this is the end of the battle, we have just witnessed the goat with the coat, Monkey D, the king, defeat an emperor, man. Like, I, it, it hit me so hard in chapter 1049, but in this week's chapter to see the aftermath, I was just like, yo, rest easy, king. Like, rest well, king. I already know Luffy's not gonna get back up for a minute, but rest easy, my brother. And same thing with Zoro, bro. Like, y'all deserve the biggest rest possible. I don't know what's in store in regards to the Luffy and Zoro stuff. We discussed it in the last Afterthoughts, the possibilities of a time skip and all that, right? But just at its bare minimum, just give my boys some rest. They deserve it. Like, Luffy and Zoro deserve it. Like, let my dogs rest. Of course, we don't know what's about to happen here in post Wano, uh, whether it's gonna call for them to return back, whatever the case may be, we have no idea. But things are gonna happen there. And especially with Momonosuke stating in this week's chapter that the borders uh, are not gonna be opened yet, there's also a few different possibilities in just with that line alone. We don't know what that could imply and whatnot. After episode 1015, my love for Yamato's character, which is already extremely sky high. I'm telling you right now, if I were to have done a favorite characters list, like favorite One Piece characters list, and we were doing like a tier list, Yamato pre-episode 1015 was already at the very, very top, like S plus tier, right? I love Yamato's character. If you've been here for a while, you know this. I really love Yamato's character. After episode 1015, Yamato is like beyond S plus plus tier, right? Like it's... My love for this character is out of this world. And so when you get this moment at the beginning of this week's chapter with Yamato having seen what Momonosuke did and what the goat with the coat did, I can't wait to see what Yamato's about to do. Because in this week's chapter, we got to see the way that she took things upon herself, what she wanted to do with ensuring that Luffy does not hit the floor and going out and telling all of the rest of Kaido's crew that they better step down. Because the general, the general in Kozuki Momonosuke has delivered the orders. He's going up in like swimwear. 
And so if y'all don't surrender now, you're gonna have to see me. You're gonna have to see me in hands, all right? And what I love so much about this, once again, is that this is all coming from her. This is her own decisions of wanting to do what she's currently doing. And so with Yamato coming in, saving Luffy in a very precious moment and the smile, the most precious smile you could ever imagine, the smile looking down upon Luffy, an individual that she was waiting for this entire time, an individual that she could not wait to arrive because she knew that if anyone could do it, it would be him. It would be the goat with the coat. And to see that all these years of waiting, all these years, of continuing to want to leave, want to be free, because if there was anyone on Wano or Onigashima that wanted to be free from the tyranny of Kairo and Orochi, it was Yamato. And so to see her have this moment was really, really beautiful, regardless of what happens from here on out. It's like that smile, you know the amount of weight behind that smile. And I love that we got that in this week's chapter, especially coming off of last week with the lanterns. Because like I was talking about with the lanterns, the lanterns represented everyone's wishes being pushed up into the air because they believed nobody would see it. And in Yamato's case, those wishes were presented for us to see, and we know how deep that goes. And so this smile was like the equivalent of that lantern and that wish being fulfilled. And I really, really love this scene at the beginning of the chapter. You already know this is going to get the most beautiful of soundtracks when this comes about in the anime. Now, in regards to Yamato's character from here on out, you know that we've been talking about not only just on, 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 on here, but also within our community about Yamato's moment of proclaiming her name, right? Proclaiming who she really is, discarding the Odin title and being like, no, I am Yamato. And this is what I want to do, not what Kozuki Odin wants to do. And to see that here in the coming chapter is going to be really beautiful. And what's going to lead towards that happening, what's going to lead towards her proclaiming her name and gaining that sense of self-freedom, finally, after all of these years, is thanks to the efforts of Momonosuke and Luffy. Because now that she saw Momonosuke cowering as much as, as he was, Yamato continuously being like, yo, we're going to die here together or you're not going to do this. But I'm staying here with you throughout this entire thing. And so for her to see Momonosuke do what he did, finally bring down the flower capital so that it, or the Onigashima, so it does not crash the flower capital, utilizing the flame clouds. And also to see that Luffy beat the unbeatable after getting wrecked, Joy Boy, Gear 5th, goes up in like summer. She witnessed it all. She was the perfect live reaction channel expressing all of our thoughts of <gasps> like well, she was experiencing peak fiction in 8K. If we were experiencing in 4K, she was experiencing in VR. She was experiencing the peakest of the peak in VR. Chapter 1044, 1045, 1046, 1047, she was she had the front row seat, the, the battle of the century. So she saw it. And knowing how Yamato has been heavily inspired by legends of the past, individuals that she heard about in writing, Roger, Whitebeard, Odin, these people that she looks up to through story, to see this happening before her eyes, a story unfolding before her very eyes of Luffy defeating the unbeatable, how could she not be inspired? And so because of the way her character is on being inspired by heroic and legendary larger than life figures, you already know what this is going to lead to. The most free, the freest individual in the sea, who regardless of title or name or fruit or whatever, he's always been the same. He's the go with the coat. The man who's going to be the king of the pirates. And so for her to see Momonosuke's heroic moment and Monkey D's, you already know her moment's coming in soon. And it's going to come as, as a result of these two having done what they did. As, in, as a moment of inspiration of like, you know what? If Momonosuke is this, especially considering what could happen here soon with Momonosuke as well, but we'll talk about that in a second, and Luffy and what he did. So you already know that's going to lead a moment of inspiration inside of her heart of like, nah, I'm not Odin. Odin was a great man. Odin was a legendary man. But I'm here to do what only I can do. And I am Yamato. And I can't wait to see that moment of, of self-freedom, that moment where... 
she puts her own dreams, her own desires above that of what she believes Odin would have wanted to do or would have done in that, in that, in that scenario. And I can't wait for that here in, in the end of Wano where we see Yamato being freed from the shackles of not only Kaido but also of Odin's legacy. And now we're about to see that through Momonosuke. Finally, because the thing is, right, Odin, as legendary as he was, because he was so legendary, those shackles were placed on his son to live up to that legend, especially after Odin's death and everything they did to ensure that he survived. And so with Hiori and Momonosuke about to have their moment here, and I'm going to assume the reason why Oda didn't show their reunion because she was riding down on Momonosuke's back, the reason for that has to be that he's saving that reunion for whenever Momonosuke is in adult form. So we're going to have Momonosuke looking the way that he should look, Hiori, their emotional reunion, and then we're going to figure out what Denjiro is going to say to the people, or maybe it's going to be the other way around. Denjiro is going to say, this is the new Shogun of Wano, and is either going to present Momonosuke or Hiori, because one of the two is going to end up being the Shogun of Wano. And so, regardless of who ends up being the Shogun, we're going to have that moment, that reunion between them, a very emotional moment. The people of Wano, and now finally being freed by from Orochi and Kaido, are now going to have the opportunity to not only have that weight lift off their shoulders, but have a brand new hope in the fact that Hiori is still alive, and so is Momonosuke. And so now we're going to be presented with a brand new route for the people of Wano, that their wishes are going to be fulfilled. And, and, it's, and it, it adds so much weight to that stuff, right? And I can't wait to see not only who gets chosen as the Shogun of Wano, but their moment together. Because Momonosuke and Hiori have been apart for 20 years. Siblings of the legendary Odin, right? So it's like these two individuals, and I look forward to seeing how the Scabbard's going to react to all of this, because of course, those are going to be really emotional moments as well. And we've seen up until this point that Momonosuke has those moments of greatness. The Momonosuke has those moments of, okay, now this is my general. This is my shogun right here. And so because he's had all those moments sprinkled throughout, also with moments of being a coward, I look forward to seeing how this is going to take place in regards to if he is chosen as shogun or if he's not, he's still going to have to speak to the people of Wano. And they're going to know that he's the one who protected him throughout all of this. And so I really want to see how they are going to approach that and how Momonosuke himself is going to deliver his speech. Because you already know my man's about to have one of the most epic and legendary promos ever. Even if he's stumbling on his words or whatever it is, then it's going to be emotional. If he's stumbling on his words, it's going to be emotional. If my man with his whole chest, with his resolve, with everything in his being, and it's going to be epic and, and, and incredible, right? Regardless, it's going to be emotional. So for us to see the culmination of Momonosuke's journey up until this point, I can't wait to see that either. So I'm fully expecting Momonosuke greatness to take place as a result of what just happened, as well as Yamato greatness, regardless of what happens from here on out. Whether the arc is actually over or we have some craziness inbound, Yamato and Momonosuke are going to have some incredible moments here in the coming chapters. And I'm so excited for the two of them. I'm so excited because, you know, the shackles of living behind a, a legendary figure like that has kept them bound for a long time. And I look forward to seeing how they come into their own, freeing themselves of those shackles in the way that we've seen up until this point. And so I can't wait for it. It's going to be good stuff. Let me know what y'all think about all this and any other thoughts on chapter 1050 on top of all the stuff that we talked about in the live stream. But I really wanted to focus the afterthoughts on incoming Yamato and Momonosuke greatness because I'm very excited to see where those two um, journeys end up going here in the next couple of chapters. So I will see you all next time. Have an awesome day. Man, dude, no break for a couple weeks too? We're going to be in like swim more. We're going to be eating good. Looking forward to the next one. It could be either extremely emotional, shocking, whatever it is. I'm just, can't wait for 1051, man. Cannot wait, dude. Let's go.